Explaining the controversy around his appointment. Plus, you can get a fever, red eyes, and then it's the classic telltale red rash. The City of Toronto has its first confirmed case of measles this year. We'll have more on how you can protect your family. And the Special Olympics World Games begin next Thursday in Abu Dhabi. Tonight, a send-off for Canadian athletes. Good evening, I'm Talia Ricci. Toronto Police Superintendent Ron Tavener has withdrawn his name to be OPP Commissioner. Tavener, a longtime family friend of Premier Doug Ford, was controversially named by the Ford government to become the next chief of the OPP in late November. In a letter to Community Safety Minister Sylvia Jones, Tavener writes, This decision is not an easy one for me to make. I believe the OPP requires new leadership and a change in culture at its most senior levels. The thousands of men and women who make up the front lines of the OPP deserve leadership that will put their concerns and well-being at the forefront of decision-making. The Community Safety Minister also released a statement saying, in part, we thank him for his continued service as a decorated police officer. Interim Commissioner Gary Couture remains in his post. We will have more to say about the role of the Commissioner in the near future. And we're hearing from the Premier too, Doug Ford, saying tonight, since the beginning of this process, our objective has been to bring new leadership in order to address many long-standing and systematic issues that have existed for some time with the OPP. It is very unfortunate that the opposition has chosen to politicize this process rather than focusing on how we can support our frontline officers. On behalf of the government, I want to thank Ron Tavener for putting his name forward. And the NDP responding to Ford's comments tonight, MPP Sarah Singh spoke at Queen's Park. I don't think we're politicizing anything. I think we're looking for the answers that Ontarians deserve here in this province. I think, uh, you know, the Premier is the one that is appointing his friends and his insiders to these very uh, top positions, especially, you know, something like the OPP Commissioner, where we understand that there needs to be a very clear distinction between the police and, um, you know, our politicians. Uh, he's the one that I think is actually going out there and muddying the water. So if anyone's uh, creating a political mess, I, I would think it'd be our Premier. And a final note, Toronto Police released a statement tonight saying Taverner will continue to be the unit commander of the Northwest District and he has their support. Taverner's decision comes just two days after the dismissal of OPP Deputy Commissioner Brad Blair and questions about the firing continue to dog the Ford government. Blair was ousted earlier this week after filing a lawsuit to try and force an investigation into Taverner's appointment. He was also a candidate for that job and the government says he was fired for acting in his own interest. Today we're hearing from Blair's lawyer. Lisa Shing reports. Premier Doug Ford was nowhere to be seen in the House. In fact, he's been gone all week as the controversy over the hiring and firings at the top of the OPP have picked up steam and the NDP have noticed. If our leaders don't bother showing up, that they don't believe the question period is worth the effort, that is an aff I, I quite frankly believe it's an affront to democracy, Spe especially when he's in, he is the Premier, is personally implicated in the events of the day. He's scared. He's in, gone into hiding. Ford's ministers beg to differ. He actually does love being a question period, um, but, but there are other things obviously that occupy the Premier's uh, time and priorities. The Premier's office pointed out Ford met with chicken farmers on Monday, toured a soda stream factory on Tuesday, and a Sobeys warehouse today. Meanwhile, Brad Blair's lawyer held a teleconference with reporters and had some scathing words to say. God help you if you cross the Premier. When the Premier comes knocking, you open the door and you do what you're told or you lose your job. Julian Faulkner says Blair is legally still a police officer because he did not have a hearing before his dismissal, which he's entitled to under the province's Police Services Act. A police officer cannot be stripped of his status or her status as a sworn police officer without a process. Faulkner also says it was a conflict of interest for the Deputy Minister of Community Safety, Mario Di Tommaso, to trigger the dismissal, considering Di Tommaso was on the committee that selected Ron Tavner. A high school student would understand the blatant personal and professional conflict of interest. 
At this point, we don't know whether Blair will take legal action over losing his job. Lisa Shing, CBC News, Toronto. Now, as Lisa mentioned, throughout all this controversy, the Premier has been noticeably absent from Queen's Park. In December, since the day Tavener was appointed to lead the OPP, Ford missed five out of the seven days that the legislature met. Since coming back after the holidays in February, Ford has been absent six out of the ten days. Lisa McLeod says she fears for her safety and will not attend an autism protest rally planned for tomorrow. Well, I won't be attending the protests. I've attended protests before. Uh, the tone of the debate has uh, caused me some concern with my own personal security. So um, we're going to make sure that I'm in the House tomorrow, um, but also focusing on International Women's Day. You're afraid what for you your own safety? Your is that why? You're afraid for your own safety? You won't uh, attend the, the rally? Is that why? Uh, well, we've had some credible threats, so we're going to make sure that uh, that's uh, first and foremost uh, is maintaining uh, the safety of uh, me and my team. McLeod has been at the centre of a heated debate over changes to the autism program. The new program would offer less money to each family who has a child with autism, but allow more people to get off of a wait list. McLeod has been accused of freezing the wait list to manufacture a crisis. Since the changes were announced, protesters have lined the halls of Queen's Park, many of them calling for the minister to step down. The City of Toronto has its first confirmed case of the measles in 2019. It involves an unvaccinated baby that contracted the virus while on an overseas trip with family. But with March break just around the corner, many more families will be traveling and potentially exposed to measles. Kelda Yoon has more on how to keep your little ones protected. Dr. Vanita Dubey from Toronto Public Health says measles begins like a cold. A runny nose, not feeling well, you can get a fever, red eyes, and then it's the classic telltale red rash. She says the infant that contracted the city's first confirmed case is now resting at home and risk to the public is low. The child did not go to a lot of places where they could have exposed people here in Toronto. Nonetheless, this is raising concern about parents who are not vaccinating their children. But in this case, the child was under one year old and... Typically, the MMR vaccine is given at one year of age. So should parents be worried? With March break just around the corner, many families are planning on traveling. So what do they need to know to protect their little ones and themselves? We're here to speak with Dr. Iris Gorfinkel to find out. Hello. If they know they're going to be traveling, there's no real harm to getting the vaccination. The only thing about it is, is that Toronto Public Health may not recognize it if it's given too early. So Toronto Public Health likes to see it right at 12 months. But Toronto Public Health says it's aware travel changes things and that six months of age is acceptable and will be recognized. If they're traveling with a young infant in particular, consider getting the vaccine early. Gorfinkel says doing travel research is also important. But understand that it's not like measles is rampant everywhere in the world. There are hot spots of diseases. So in the Philippines and certain areas within Africa right now, those are the key hot spots right now. She also urges parents to make sure they are immunized, particularly mothers who breastfeed. For breastfed infants, the immunity goes through the breast milk helping the infant. Finally, those born between 1970 and 1992 may have had only one booster. Another dose is recommended for immunity. Kelda Yoon, CBC News, Toronto. Meteorologist Colette Kennedy joins us now for a first look at our forecast. Colette, I've definitely needed my long johns the last couple of days, mm -hmm. but the sunshine did help a little bit today. Yeah, it's nice to get that sunshine in and then the clouds kind of building more into the later afternoon hours. It helps a little with this Arctic air mass that's in place and we've just got a little bit further to go before we're going to see the warm up. Still have some like flurry activity kind of out there sort of seeing this off and on through the overnight, but most of it's going to be clearing up in the next few hours and that sets us up speaking of sunshine as high pressure digs in for a nice day on Thursday. In fact, just a few clouds and it's looking good. The wind's still a little bit breezy, giving us a wind chill. The temperature's coming up a bit. 
They really don't come up significantly till we get into Friday, another day with some sunshine, and that's when we're going to see those readings getting at least closer to the freezing mark. Friday looks good. It's looking pretty good into the first half of the weekend, but then things change for the second half. So coming up a little later in the show, I'll talk to you about that next system that's going to move in. Again, just a little dusting to some flurry activity through the next few hours. Minus 12, feeling like minus 20 overnight tonight and tomorrow afternoon with some sunshine. We take it up a little bit to minus 5, Dahlia. All right, we'll check in with you in a little bit. Thanks, Colette. Sounds good. More than 100 Canadians are heading to Abu Dhabi in the morning to compete in the Special Olympics. The athletes who have intellectual disabilities have been training for years, and now they're ready to go up against nearly 200 countries. Natalie Donowski was at their send-off dinner. Win a medal or not a medal, just remember the experience and uh, just being able to wear Canadian colours. It's just such a great honour and privilege. This will be Kyle Grummet's third time representing Canada at the Special Olympic World Games. He's already won two medals, one for golf, the sport he'll be competing in in Abu Dhabi. He has a whole team of people around him uh, supporting him, so my job really is to kind of put all the pieces together and make sure everyone's on the same page, training the right things at the right time. This year, Team Canada is 109 members strong and will be in nine sporting events. We're doing athletics, swimming, rhythmic gymnastics, soccer, 10-pin bowling. 2018 was the 50th anniversary of the Special Olympics. In the last few years, the movement has grown exponentially. These World Games, I mean, people sort of, you know, maybe don't appreciate the size and scope of the Special Olympics movement. We're in 190 countries around the globe, over 5 million athletes registered, and 7,000 of those athletes will be at these World Games. Three-time Olympic gold medalist Marnie McBean is this year's honorary coach. She says the athletes have been training for years and they're ready to go up against the world. And it's dedication. It's the look in the eye. You know, you go to any sporting event and there's always that moment where you see an athlete right before they start, kind of exhale and focus in. And uh, you see that here with this team. Team Canada heads to Abu Dhabi tomorrow and they're going to start competing March 14th. There's no set number of medals that they want to bring home. The only goal is for everyone to do their best. Natalie Nanowski, CBC News, Toronto. Ron Tavener was supposed to testify as a witness before a police tribunal in a few weeks. It all centers around a sexual harassment complaint made by a female officer against a few of her colleagues. Coming up, more on why that case is now in limbo. So this is a tribunal that's crippled uh, and it seems that the government is just starving it to death. A 50-year-old Mississauga man is facing 100 firearm and drug-related charges. In total, seven handguns, 
Three shotguns and six rifles were seized, as well as four kilos of heroin. Street value, approximately $400,000. Just by seeing the amount of heroin, as already mentioned in the number of firearms, I would expect that this is not his first rodeo. Hugh and Wilson was arrested at the end of February. This was a major takedown by the Toronto Police Guns and Gangs Task Force. Of the guns seized, seven were loaded, including two that police say they found in Wilson's SUV. Matthews, Investigators haven't linked Wilson to organized Joe, crime. Joe He's scheduled to appear in court tomorrow. The high-profile case of a Toronto police officer alleging sexual harassment is now in limbo. That's because the adjudicator in the case is no longer available. Five years ago, Constable Heather McWilliam filed a human rights complaint. She said for eight years she suffered repeated sexual harassment and humiliation on the job. McWilliam took aim at her supervisors at Toronto Police's 23 division in her statements. More than 30 witnesses testified in that case, and in just a few weeks, Superintendent Ron Tavener was set to testify as well. But now the case is on hold until the tribunal decides what to do next. As Farah Morali tells us, lawyers say this is just one symptom of a broken system. Well, we got this letter March 4th regarding my client, Heather McWilliam, saying, the adjudicator signed to the above noted file is not available to complete the matter. Please accept the tribunal's apologies for the inconvenience. This is the piece of paper that Kate Hughes says crushed five years of work. She's the lawyer for Constable Heather McWilliam. Uh, this is more than inconvenience. This is a lack of access to justice. What does this mean? Uh, is there any certainty of what's going to happen next or when the case will be heard? There's no certainty. There's no dates. There's no certainty. Um, I'm assuming the case I'll have to start over from day one. They don't have the adjudicators. Uh, and there's no indication that this government is going to get the more adjudicators. It's no secret the Human Rights Tribunal of Ontario is short-staffed. The first thing that pops up on their website, an important notice that says they're experiencing delays and are actively recruiting adjudicators. Yeah. It's really nice to meet you, by the way. Oh, okay. The worry is how those delays will affect complainants who are forced to wait years for hearings. The individual complainant becomes a pariah. Barry Swandron represents two other female Toronto police officers who've since come forward, also alleging harassment on the job. The system becomes broken. It's particularly uh, difficult for uh, women who are sexually harassed, uh, especially when the uh, institutions of the union and uh, the city uh, responsible for it aren't on their side. The Ontario Human Rights Tribunal issued a statement to CBC News saying, we respectfully decline your request for an interview. Parties in the Heather McWilliam versus Toronto Police Services Board case will be contacted to schedule a case management conference call in order for the tribunal to hear from the parties to determine the next steps. Where does that leave you? This is uh, outrageous. This woman's health has been affected, her career, um, and uh, this is a, just an indication that really uh, the Human Rights Tribunal is a broken tribunal. Farah Morali, CBC News, Toronto. The city has announced plans for a new go stop in Etobicoke. I'm Greg Ross. Coming up, we'll have more on the new Woodbine Go Station.
The weather update is brought to you by Train Extreme Conditions Testing. It's hard to stop a train, really hard. Train, the most reliable heating and cooling brand. An update now to a story we brought you on Monday. What police were calling a suspicious death has now been ruled a homicide. Police responded to a call in the Broadview Avenue and Mount Pleasant Road area around noon on Monday. A man was found without vital signs and pronounced dead at the scene. A postmortem has revealed the 47-year-old man died of blunt force trauma. A 42-year-old man has been arrested. It's goodbye Etobicoke North and hello Woodbine. The West End GO station is moving a few kilometers and as Greg Ross explains, it will all be privately funded. The collective vision came together. According to uh, Councillor Michael Ford, Woodbine Casino and Racetrack is at the center of some major changes to North Etobicoke and he says it needs to be more accessible. And in that redevelopment, transit um, is a huge uh, component of that. Woodbine is funding a project to bring a new GO station closer to the racetrack, where a casino expansion is already underway, and it will include two new luxury hotels. Ford says it's already attracting new business to the area. This was uh, deemed to be a world-class destination, and that's what we want, that's what we have been promoting it as a city. While there are no definite plans in place for the location of this new GO station, Councillor Ford says they hope to put it here, on the southeast corner of Woodbine Racetrack's property. It will replace the existing Etobicoke North Station, which is less than three kilometers away on Kipling Avenue near Highway 409. It's a, a new GO station called the Woodbine uh, Station, and that will be on the Kitchener GO line. It was welcome news for some casino goers. I think that they should be doing it because, uh, you know, they need something like this up here. But others wonder if the city should be more focused on improving transit in other areas. I know it's just a mess downtown Toronto. We need to improve our public transit everywhere, not just here. Ford says this move will bring the stop closer to nearby Humber College. Good news for some students who live on the GO line. That's great. I could take the GO bus to school. <laughs> but it's still more than three kilometers away from the school. I mean, nobody's going to want to walk in the winters. Ford says the hope is the new GO station will also attract more people west of the city to Woodbine because it's on the Kitchener GO line. Greg Ross, CBC News, Toronto. Colette's back now with our extended forecast, and I think Wednesday is about the time we start thinking about the weekend, and I know there's some sun coming our way, so I'm happy about that. Yes, I believe that's why we refer to it as hump day. If we can just get over this, then we're headed towards the weekend, and we're headed then towards the end of the week and weekend towards some milder air. Average high at this time of year, I know it's probably hard to believe, is almost two degrees. That's where we would be if we were seasonal, which we are not, and the average low would be minus seven, closer to what we saw. For, well, I couldn't even get there really for a daytime high. We do have a little bit of light flurry activity. More significant stuff has been to the north and northwest, but uh, just seeing this kind of pushing through, it's a really weak system moving through overnight tonight. And then for tomorrow, it looks good in terms of a few clouds, but mostly we'll see sunshine with this high pressure that's going to be in place for a few days. So that carries on not only Thursday, but into Friday as well with the sun. In fact, even towards Saturday, what happens though, it's a little interesting, is that ridge is going to be fighting with a system to the south. So keeping it and hopefully the cloud cover away through Saturday and then we will see it letting go and letting the system move through into Sunday which I'll show you here in the five-day forecast but first of all I want to show you that overnight in southwestern Ontario minus 14 for you there in Windsor Leamington as well and then tomorrow it's minus two with a good deal of sunshine and the temperature getting a, a little bit milder and overnight tonight minus 12 but really it will still feel like minus 20 so even though the temperature not falling off that much it's still going to feel like it did throughout the day overnight tonight feeling like minus 20 tomorrow afternoon we pick it up hey here we go minus five we're getting a little bit better and then really we'll see the difference in the heat well if you can call it that into Friday minus one will be the high on that day with some sunshine there's that sun on Saturday this is what I wanted to get into the system that moves through uh, it's going to be pretty tightly wound up so we're going to see some windier conditions Saturday into Sunday especially Sunday starting off perhaps as a bit of a mix because of that overnight low of minus three so still below freezing but then changing over to showers as we're looking at a high of at least seven degrees uh, into Sunday and then those showers will move out and we'll still have some cloud cover into Monday but by the way that Reminder again that Saturday night into Sunday, the clocks go forward an hour, Talia. Well, at least we'll be springing forward into some higher temperatures. Yes, looking forward to that. <laughs> Thanks, Colette. You're welcome.
185 years ago today, Toronto was born. Well, actually, it was incorporated as a city. Coming up, do you know how Toronto got its name? We'll tell you after the break. Check out that beautiful city, and it's just getting better with age. Tonight, Toronto is celebrating its 185th birthday. It was on this day in 1834 that the town of York was incorporated as the city of Toronto. The name Toronto comes from a Mohawk word meaning where there are trees in water. French explorers adopted the name and it first appeared on a map in 1678 as Lac Toronto. Toronto gradually came to refer to a larger region, including the site of the present city. And that's our show for you tonight. Thanks for watching. Good night.